Unpause. Here we go. I'm uh, Vincent Easley here at RealLibertyMedia.com. Once again, this is the uh, second edition of the radio reading series. This is, uh, I've got to change dates here. This is uh, October the 19th, 2019 from uh, RLM Radio, reading uh, reading radio, <laughs> radio reading series. Tonight it is Eat the Babies and it is a modest proposal by Dr. Jonathan Swift from the Project Gutenberg. And yes, I did have a loose wire, and uh, so I've started again and back <coughs> to the reading. So this comes from uh, Jonathan Swift. Uh, it is uh, for preventing the children of poor people in Ireland, and elsewhere for that matter, from being a burden on their parents or country, and for making them beneficial to the public. From Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Swift, 1729. It's not new. Now, I played the clip that the lady did there with uh, uh, Ocasio, and uh, I'm going to include this in the radio log. I'm going to put the links in there, and I'll come back at the end of this and uh, probably play it again at, and talk about it. <clears throat> so with that, let me give you this reading from way, way long ago, and I'll play the part. It is a melancholy object to those who walk through this great town or travel in the country when they see the streets, the roads, and cabin doors crowded with beggars to the female sex, followed by three, four, or six children, all in rags and in any opportunity and ever passenger for gnomes. These mothers, instead of being able to work for their honest livelihood, are forced to employ all their time in strolling to beg for substance for the helpless infants, who, as they grow up, either turn to thieves for want of work or leave their dear native country to fight for the pretender in Spain or sell themselves to the Barbados. I think it is all agreed by all parties that this prodigious number of children in their arms or on the backs or at the heels of their mothers and uh, frequently of their fathers is in the present deplorable state of the kingdom a very great additional grievance. And therefore, whoever could find out a fair, cheap, and easy method of making these children sound and useful members of the commonwealth would deserve so well of the public as to have a statue set up for a preserver of the nation. But my intention is very far from confined to, pro to provide only for the children of the professed beggars it is of a much greater extent, and shall take in the whole the number of infants at a certain age who are born of parents in effect as little able to support them as those who demand our charity in the streets. As to my own part, knowing turned my thoughts for many years upon this important subject and maturely weighed in the several schemes of the, our projectors. I've always found them grossly mistake, mistaken in her computation. It is true, a child just dropped from its dam may be supported by her milk for a solar year with little other nourishment, at most not above the value of two shillings, which the mother may certainly get, or the value in scraps by her lawful occupation of begging. And it is exactly, it is at exactly one year old that I propose to provide for them in such a manner as raiment for the rest of their lives. They shall, on the contrary, contribute to the feeding and partly to the clothing of many thousands. There is likewise another great advantage in my scheme, that it will prevent those voluntary abortions that, a, that that horrid practice of women murdering their bastard children, alas, too frequent among us sacrificing the poor innocent babes, I doubt more to avoid the expense than the shame which would move to tears and pity in the most savage and inhuman breast. The number of souls in this kingdom being usually reckoned at one million and a half of these I calculate, there may be about 200,000 couples whose wives are breeders. For which, I know, uh, for which number I subtract 30,000 couple who are able to maintain their own children, although I apprehend there cannot be so many under the present distress of the kingdom. 
But this being granted, there will remain 170,000 breeders. I, again, I subtract 50,000 for these women who miscarry or whose children die by accident or disease within the year. <clears throat> there only remain 120,000 children of poor parents annually born. The question, therefore, is, is, is how this number shall be reared and provided for, which, is I, as I have already said, under the present situation of affairs, is utterly impossible by the methods hitherto proposed. <clears throat> well, for uh, we we can neither employ them in handicraft or agriculture. They neither build houses. I mean, in the country, nor cultivate land. They very very seldom pick up a livelihood by stealing till they arrive at six years old. Except that they are they are of towardly parts. Although I confess, they learn the rudiments much earlier, during which time they can, however, be properly looked upon as probationers. As I have been informed by a principal gentleman in the country of Kevin, who protested to me that he never knew above one or two instances under the age of six, even in a part of the kingdom so renowned for the quickest proficiency in the art. I am assured by our merchants that a boy or girl between 12 years of age is no sellable commodity. Even when they come to this age, they will not yield above three pounds or three pounds and a half crown at most on the exchange, which cannot turn <clears throat> to their to account either for their parents or kingdom. The charge of nutrients and rags having been at least four times that value, I shall now therefore humbly propose my own thoughts, which I hope will not be liable to the least objection. <clears throat> I've been assured by a very known American, a very well-knowing American of my acquaintance in London, that a healthy child, well-nourished, is at a year old a most delicious and nourishing wholesome food. Whether stewed, roasted, baked, or boiled, I make no doubt that it will eventually serve in a fricassee or a ragu. I do therefore humbly offer to public consideration that of the 120,000 children already computed, 20,000 may be reserved for breed, where, where of only one-fourth part be males, <clears throat> what, what, which is more than we allow to sheep, black cattle, or swine. And my reason is, that these children are seldom the fruits of marriage, a circumstance not much regarded by our savages. Therefore, one male will be sufficient to serve four females, that the remaining 100,000 may, at one year of age, be offered in sale to the persons of quality and fortune. Though the kingdom always advising the mother to let them suck plentiful in the last month so as to render them plump and fat for a good table. A child will make two dishes at an entertainment for friends, and when the family dines alone, the four hind quarter will well, it'd make a reasonable dish, seasoned with a little pepper and salt. Mm. We'll be very, very good boiled in the fourth day, especially in the winter. I have reckoned upon a medium that a child just born will be, will weigh 12 pounds in a solar year. Now, if tolerably nourished, increased to 28 pounds. I grant this food will be somewhat dear and therefore very proper for landlords who, as they have already devoured most of their parents, seem to have the best title to the children. Infant's flesh will be in season throughout the year but more plentiful in March and a little before and after. For we are told by a grave author, an eminent French physician, that fish being a prolific diet, there are more children born in Roman Catholic countries about nine months after Lent than at any other season. Therefore, reckon in a year after Lent, the markets will be more glutted than usual because the number of popish infants is at least three to one in this kingdom, and therefore... It will have one other collateral advantage by 
lessening number of Papists among us. <clears throat> I've already computed the, the charge of nursing a beggar's child, in which list I reckon all cottagers, laborers, and four-fifths of the farmers to be about two shillings per annum, rags included. And I believe no gentleman would repine to give ten shillings for the carcass of a good fat child, which, as I've said, will make four dishes of excellent nutritive meat. When he hath only some particular friend or his own family to dine with, thus the squire will learn to be a good landlord and grow proper among his tenants. The mother will have eight shillings neat profit and be fit to work till she produces another child. <clears throat> Those who are more thrifty, as I must confess the times require, may flay the carcass, the skin of which artificially dressed will It'll make admirable gloves for ladies and summer boots for fine gentlemen. As to our city of Dublin, shambles may be appointed for this purpose in the most convenient parts of it, and butchers, we may be assured, will not be wanting although I rather recommend buying the children alive and dressing them hot from the knife as we do roasting pigs. <clears throat> a very worthy person, a true lover of his country and whose virtues I highly esteem was let <coughs> excuse me was lately pleased in discoursing on this matter to offer a refinement upon my scheme, he says. That many gentlemen of this kingdom having of late destroyed their deer he con conceived that the one of venison might well supplied by the bodies of young lads and maidens, not exceeding fourteen years of age, nor under twelve, so great a number of both sexes in every country, being now ready to starve for want of work and service. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon. And these be disposed of by their parents, if alive or otherwise, by the nearest relations. But with due deference... To so excellent a friend, and it's so deserving a patriot, I cannot be altogether in his sentiments. For as to males, my American acquaintance, he assured me from uh, frequent experience that their flesh was generally tough and lean, and that uh, of our schoolboys by continual exercise, and their taste disagreeable, and to fatten them would not answer the charge. Then as to the females... It would, I think, with humble submission, be a loss to the public because they soon would become breeders themselves. And besides, it's not improper that some scrupulous uh, uh, people might be apt to censor such a practice, although indeed very unjustly, as a little bordering upon a cruelty, which I confess has always been with me the strongest objection against any project, how well soever intended. But in order to justify my friend, he confessed that this experiment was put into his head by the famous Salmanasur, a native of the island of Formosa, who came from thence to London about twenty years ago, and in conversation told my friend that in his country, when any young person happened to be put to death, the executioner sold the carcass to persons of quality as a prime dainty, and that, in his time, the body of a plump girl of fifteen, who was crucified for an attempt to poison the emperor, was sold to his imperial majesty's prime minister of state, and other great uh, mandarins of the court in joints from the Gilbert, well, it, <laughs> to the courts in joints from the Gibbet, and four hundred crowns. Neither indeed can I deny that if the same use were made of several plump young girls in this town, who, without one single groat to their fortunes, cannot stir abroad without a chair, and appear at a playhouse in assemblies and foreign fineries with their never will pay for, the kingdom would not be the worst. Some persons of a desponding spirit are in great concern about the vast number of poor people who are aged, diseased or maimed, and I have been desired to employ my thoughts what cause may be taken to ease the nation of so grievous an encumbrance. 
Oh, but I'm not in the least pain under this mat matter because it is very well known that they are every day dying and rotting by cold and famine and filth and vermin as fast as can be reasonably expected. And as to the young laborers, they are now in almost as hopeful a condition. They cannot get work and consequently pine away for one of nourishment to a degree that at, at, if any time they had accidentally hired the common labor, they have not strength to perform it, and thus the country and themselves are happily delivered from the evils to come. I have too long digressed, and therefore shall return to my subject. I think the advantages by proposal which I have made are obvious and many, as well as the high of the highest importance. For first, as I, as, all, as I have already observed, it would greatly lessen the number of Papists with whom we are yearly overrun, being the principal breeders of the nation as well as our most dangerous enemies, and who stay at home on purpose with the design to, to deliver the kingdom to the pretender, hoping to take their advantage by absent of so many good Protestants who have chosen rather to leave their country then stay at home and pay tithes against their conscience to an Episcopal curate. Secondly, the, proper ten the poorer tenants will have something valuable of their own, which, by law, may be made liable to a distress and help to pay their landlord's rent, their corn and cattle being already seized, and money a thing unknown. <coughs> Thirdly, Whereas the maintenance of a hundred thousand children from two years old and upwards cannot be computed at least at less than ten shillings apiece per annum, the nation's stock will thereby be thereby increased fifty thousand pounds per annum, besides the profit of a new dish introduced to the tables of all gentlemen of fortune in the kingdom who have any refinement in taste that is, and the money will circulate, circulate among ourselves, the good beings entirely of our own growth and manufacture. Fourth, the constant breeders beside the gain of eight shillings sterling per annum by the sale of their children will be rid of the chance, the charge of maintaining them after the first year. Fifthly, this food would likewise bring great custom to taverns, where the vintners will certainly be so prudent as to produce the best recipes for dressing into perfection. Consequently, have their houses frequented by all fine gentlemen who justly value themselves upon their knowledge in good eating and a skillful cook who, else, who understands how to oblige his guests and will continue to make it as expensive as they please. Okay, just a little pause there. About Sixthly, this would be a great inducement to marriage, which all wise nations have either encouraged by rewards or enforced by laws and penalties. It would increase the care and the tenderness of mothers towards their children when they were sure of a settlement for the life of the poor babies provided in some sort by the public to their annual profit instead of expense. We should soon see an honest emulation among other married women, which of them could bring the fattest child to the market. Men would become as fond of their wives during the time of their pregnancy as they now are of the mares and fold, their cows and calf for sows when they are ready to farrow, nor offer to beat or kick them as is too frequent a practice for fear of a miscarriage. Many other advantages might be enumerated. For instance, the addition of some thousand carcasses to our exportation of barreled beef, the propaganda, propagation of a swine's flesh, and improvement in the art of making good bacon, so much wanted among us by the great destruction of pigs, too frequent at our tables, which are no way comparable in taste or magnificence to a well-grown, fat, fat yearling child, <clears throat> which, roasted whole, will make a considerable figure 
at a Lord's Mayor's Feast, or at any other public entertainment. But this, and many others I admit, being studious of brevity, supposing that 1,000 families in this city would be constant customers for infant's flesh, besides others who might have it at married meetings, particularly at weddings and christenings. I compute that Dublin would take off annually about 20,000 carcasses and the rest of the kingdom, where probably they will be sold somewhat cheaper, the re remaining 80,000. <clears throat> I, I can think of uh, no one objection that there will possibly be raised against this proposal unless it should be urged that the number of people be will be thereby much lessened in the kingdom. <clears throat> this I freely own and, and was indeed one principal design in offering it to the world. I desire the, re the reader will observe that I calculate my remedy for this one individual kingdom of Ireland and for no other that was ever, that ever was, is, or I think ever can be upon earth. <clears throat> Therefore, let no man talk to me of other expedients, of taxing our absentees at five shillings a pound, or of using neither clothes nor household furniture except what is of our own growth and manufacture, of utterly rejecting the materials and instruments that promote foreign luxury, of curing the expenses of pride, vanity, vanity, idleness, and gaming in our women, of introducing a vein of parisomy, prudence, and temperance, of learning to love our country, wherein we differ even from Laplanders and the inhabitants of this other far land, of, quit of quitting our animosities and factions, nor acting any longer like the Jews, who were murdering one another at the very moment their city was taken, of being a little cautious not to sell our country in conscience for nothing, of teaching landlords to have at least one degree of mercy towards their tenants. Lastly, of putting a spirit of honesty, industry, and skill into our shopkeepers, who, if a, if, a re, if, a, if a resolution could now be taken to buy only our native goods, would immediately unite to cheat and exact upon us the price, the measure, and the goodness, nor could ever yet be brought to make one fair proposal of just dealing, though often and earnestly invited to it. Therefore, I repeat, let no man talk to me of these in the like expedience till he hath at least some glimpse of hope that there will ever be some hearty and sincere attempt to put them into practice. But as to myself, having been wearied out for many years with offering vain, idle, visionary thoughts and at length utterly despairing of success, I fortunately fell upon this proposal, which... As it is wholly new, so it has something solid and real of no experience and little trouble, full in our own power, and whereby we can incur no danger in disobliging England. For this kind of commodity will not bear exportation, and flesh being too tender a consistence to admit a long con uh, continuance in salt, although perhaps I could name a country which would be glad to eat up our whole nation without it. After all, I am not so violently bent upon my own opinion as to reject any offer uh, proposed by wise men, which shall be found equally innocent, cheap, easy, and effectual. But therefore something of that kind shall be advanced in contradiction to my scheme in offering a better. I desire that the author or authors will be pleased Maturely to consider two points. <clears throat> First, as things now stand, how will they able to be f be able to find food and raiment for a hundred thousand useless miles and backs? And secondly, there being a round million of creatures and humane figures throughout this kingdom, whose whole substance put to your common stock would leave them in debt, two million pounds sterling, adding those who are beggars by profession to the bulk of farmers, cottagers, and laborers with their wives and children who are beggars in effect. I desire those politicians 
who dislike <coughs> who dislike my overture and may perhaps be so bold to attempt an answer that they will first ask the parents of these mortals <coughs> whether they would not at this day think it a great happiness to have been sold for food at a year old in the manner I prescribed and therefore have avoided such a perpetual scene of misfortune as they have since gone through by the oppression of landlords, the impossibility of payment rent without money or trade, uh, the one of common substance with neither house nor clothes to cover them from the inclemencies, inclemencies of the weather in the most inevitable prospect of entailing the like or greater mis mi miseries upon their breed forever. I profess in the sincerity of my heart I have the I have not the least personal interest in endeavoring to promote to promote this necessary work, having no other motive than the public good of my country, by advancing our trade, providing for infants, relieving the poor, and giving some pleasure to the rich. I have no children by which I can propose to, to get a single penny, the youngest being the nine years old and my wife passed childbearing. And that has been stated by me for Jonathan Swift. 1729. And I've got that to change there, this date, or this uh, RR1 to 2. <clears throat> Let me tell you, this is come from the Project Gutenberg e-book of A Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift. This book is for the use of anyone, anywhere at no cost, with almost no restrictions whatsoever. You may copy it, give it away, or reuse it under the terms of the Project Gutenberg license, including with this ebook, or online at www.gutenberg.org. Title, A Modest Proposal for Preventing the Children of the Poor in Ireland from Being a Burden on the Parents or Country, and for Making Them Beneficial to the Public. 1729, author Jonathan Swift, release date July 27, 2008, ebook number one zero eight zero last updated October seventeenth, twenty nineteen. Language English character setting ending UTF dash eight. Start with this project. Start of this project. Gutenberg ebook a modest proposal. Produced by an anonymous volunteer and David Wigger. Wigger. Thank you. This is Vincent Easley. This has been What Matters Upon Your Gander from the Radio Reading Series, spawned from the Radio Writing Series. <laughs> this is me practicing. I want to add on to the end of this, which I started in the beginning, and I'm going to go back here to uh, Hal Anthony behind a woodshed. Yeah, let me back it up here to the beginning. Let's let uh, Hal tell about this. Now, Hal, and Hal Anthony from Behind the Woodshed, that October 6, 2019, uh, BTWRLM339. We're going to listen to maybe five minutes, I think, here of Hal. This is BTWRLM339. You know, I've had a complete change of heart, folks. I've seen the light. We're not going to be here much longer because of the climate crisis, folks. We have only have a few months left. I'd love to support that Green New Deal, folks. I'd love to support AOC, green jobs. But getting rid of fossil fuels is not going to solve the problem fast enough, folks. I think we need to promote the next campaign. We need to get ahead of this curve. You people are pollution. Stopping making babies is not enough, folks. We need to eat the babies. And I got the T-shirt to prove it. But better than me, let's hear it from someone who actually presents this in the most brilliant way and looks ahead of the future and actually calls it out on something we have to really Getting rid of fossil fuel is not going to solve the problem fast enough. So I think your next uh, campaign slogan has to be this. We got to start eating babies. We don't have enough time. There's too much CO2. All of you, you're, you, you know, you're pollutants. Too much CO2. We have to start now. Please 
You are so great. I'm so happy that you really support a nuclear deal, but it's not enough. You know, even if we would bomb Russia, we still have too many people, too much pollution. So we have to get rid of the babies. That's a big problem. Just stopping having babies is not enough. We need to eat the babies. And this is very serious. Please give a response. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead. I think we all need to 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 understand that there are a lot of solutions that we have um, and that we can pursue and that if we act in a positive way, there's space for hope. That's right, folks. Hopium. Space for hope. Hopium. Hopium and change. Eat the babies, folks. What's the solutions now? This is brilliant. This, this uh, response was brilliant on so many levels. Of actually, it's not so. It's not funny, folks. I've been cracking up for a few days now. Brilliant. I don't know if I hope you appreciate how brilliant this move was. It probably won't be perceived as such, but this has really kind of caught my mind about really what has what's going on. How you call part of this out? Some of you can pull this off, and we find out. And I was sad to hear that they let it be known this was a setup. Someone went into a meeting uh, or the pre pre chicken hatchling escapee and explained what the actual intention of this whole thing is that they call the climate crisis. And if you don't understand that, you, you either haven't listened behind the woodshed well enough and you need to hear more, or you aren't studying enough and you're not reading the documents. And so this touches on so many points. Eat the babies, folks. That's the... People were talking out, a lot of memes came out about it, but, you know, we've heard the innuendo of this the soylent green was an indication uh, that all y'all are pollutants and they want to get rid of you. But you see AOC backing off. She didn't understand it. So if you embrace this thing to the ultimate end, uh, it would be an embarrassment. And she tried to, all she could do was, you're going to have hopium, folks. It's all you have to live on. You'd be addicted to hopium. That's all she had to offer. Why? Because the solutions, what are we talking about? The solutions network. All right, this is all tied to you. Listen to the words. You can hear exactly what's going on. That extreme is where they want to go, and they want, don't, they're want they not really prepared to tell you that. And uh, they don't uh, want to ha show you how when, what you'll be doing is eventually you'll be doing that on your own. It sounds bizarre, I know, but I'm not, not here to uh, sensationalize more than I can find in the writings themselves, if you would just read them. And so then I turned that into looking into the United States of America and saying, there's a method of destruction going on. And I don't care what name you put on it. You can put all kinds of names on it. It's an ism. It ends up being a religion. You end up, religions are underlying lots of things that are adulterations to what you know moral men and women should be doing. I don't know about any book or belief. You just have to, I guess I could say, live honorably. And that gets all contorted underneath these political economic systems religio political systems and I've been I've talked to you about over and over the years over and over tying together things I guess I'll say it here so we go, don't miss the point uh, remember we talked about the Pope integrating with sustainable development and I, I suggested to you why and how they were it's a part of this overall thing and so you see many integrations moving into this uh, global construct which has no it's all authority it has no authority and how do I, and I, and I want to point out again, how do I understand it objectively, not my subjective obsession. Objectively, we look at the United States and it has certain things called these laws relative to land and protecting it. That it's not being protected today shows you how far down the hole, the, the sink, into the stinking abyss we are. They don't want you to have property. Because when you have property, especially in the United States, you have to have protections. We're hearing that it's there still. It's not done yet. That's why I say, I don't think we're quite conquered as a people, as many people would say. We're you know, that's a great place to stop with Hal. If you've not ever listened to Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, perchance that you are one of these new listeners here and you've found this because of this hashtag of Eat the Babies, or uh, uh, if you're a fan of Gutenberg and things in the public domain, and uh, old books and <laughs> laughing at what the that the human race is. And if you listen there to the words of Hal Anthony, and, it, and you can see how it ties back in, even back into the 1700s, 
how these people were so conquered. Not even to allow to have property. How today we can contrast that or that same. We're heading in that same direction. And and this joke of this woman trolling uh, Ocasio. <laughs> And the seriousness to which this, the words of this woman were taken, it's just dumbfounding. People are so caught up in their religiosity of, of world view that they are completely blinded to the craziness. Now, would some people have taken this serious during the time of its writing? It may have gained a religious following of it if its own, which is the ludicrous and... and the hilarity of it all. <laughs> uh, hell ought to be around here pretty soon in uh, Real Liberty Media over in the chat. And he comes around at, uh, late on Saturdays when he's done kicking around the things he's done kicking around with, I reckon. And uh, he'll be on tomorrow. That's uh, every Sunday at reallibertymedia.com at noon o'clock out there on the left coast where the uh, Andreas fault line runs in one part of it and on up into the great uh, northwest the Cascades and all points uh, east and west in the Pacific time zone. That's 3 o'clock on the east coast preceded by Grimner with he's playing some blues and we're playing trivia in the chat room so here's our uh, uh, shameless promotion for Real Liberty Media. If you enjoyed this and if you did it and you want to come make uh, fun of my uh, stuttering through the reading of it, you can come. You'll find me, Vinny, right here at Real Liberty Media. Uh, you can find it in the chat. Uh, that's hey, just go to reallibertymedia.com. You'll find the rest. Lots of buttons to push. I know that's dangerous. It is for me, anyways. I want to go say hi, everybody over here in chat. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining to listen. I didn't do a good a job as I'd wanted to, but I'm happy with it. I reckon I'll keep throwing it at it. Let me say hi over to, uh, hey, there is a, a duck that oinks right there. It's a suckling duck oink pig. So we play this little game over here. You can either befriend the ducks or uh, or kill them. Well, I, kill or capture is my best policy. And I'll type that in there, and I'll catch that if somebody don't get it. Oops. If somebody don't get it before me, I'm playing. There. Best my best policy. It's a modest proposal. Should we eat the children? Should we indeed? Uh, in the link here in the radio log, you will find uh, a link for uh, well to Hal Anthony and also to the uh, RT video where they put that up there. And you can find the link there at Hal Anthony also. Uh, Save the planet. Uh, BTWRLM three three nine. Hal Anthony, uh, Hal Anthony, behind the woodshed. RT News, save the planet, eat the babies. Uh, AOC, trolled by climate change, panic. <laughs> Pro Trump, Trump, prankster. Oh, I guess I'd put Trump in the uh, in the uh, tags, right? Yeah, I'll add a couple of more tags in there. All right, let's kick this chicken and collar done, and uh, I'll come back in the. Uh, Later in the week, and finish chapter three of an Ozark heritage. Uh, it's the ancestry of uh, George A. and I.D. Barnett here in the part of the world I live, in Arkansas, in the Ozark Mountains, on Half Moon Mountain, to be specific. Uh, I probably want to grab Grimner for a minute just to make sure that I put all this stuff in the right order. Anyways, hey. Come on back around. There's more radio. There'll be some Monday night with some grim leftovers. It's uh, pretty good, even if you're not very hungry for the grim news. That this is the leftovers with Grim New York, right here at Real Liberty Media. Tuesday, we got in a perfect world. And Wednesday is uh, the Poopster and Prince Power Hour. No, I'm sorry. That's Thursday. Grammy took off for Wednesdays. We're open Wednesday. And back around Friday for a Ponder Gander at noon. That's with me at uh, noon central. And at 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern is uh, the Freakers Ball, y'all, with Grimner and Moose Girl. And Saturday is a Dork Table Edition. And don't forget to tune in on Sundays, every Sunday, every, every Sunday, right here at Real Liberty Media, behind the woodshed. Open yet. Can't whoop ass. Thanks for listening, folks.